The area that we're working in is so untapped. We're working, you know, over a mile below the surface of the ocean. Not many people have seen what these ecosystems down there look like. There is an extremely high chance that we're going to find something exciting and something extremely new. But one of the best pieces of advice I was ever given many years ago was don't drop something to the bottom of the ocean that you aren't willing to lose. My name is Dr. Oliver Shipley. I am a senior research scientist for uh, Beneath the Waves. I'm here in the Red Sea to understand patterns of deep sea predator diversity, predominantly sharks that we see here in, in the deep waters of the Red Sea. My name is Tazu Bervuts. I am an expert on marine protected areas and marine protected area management, and I also focus on the conservation and protection of sharks and rays. On this expedition, we have brought these really cool, innovative camera systems that very slowly sink all the way to the bottom and can capture six hours worth of video. Underneath that mainframe, we have an acoustic release system, so we'll send an acoustic signal from a transponder. It sends the signal down, it talks to the acoustic receiver, and then basically just unfastens itself with a release system at the bottom, and then that flotation slowly brings the lander up off the bomb and up to the surface. We're out here in the middle of the Red Sea, dropping cameras anywhere from 1,500 to 500 meters deep. We're here to discover new stuff and to see how those discoveries can enhance the protection that we give to our ocean environment. I've been involved in, in shark tagging, but it's still a process that causes quite a bit of stress to the animal. The good thing about this type of system is that, you know, there's really no physical interaction with the animal whatsoever. We drop it in, we leave it, and when it comes up, we scrub through the footage and see what, what we were able to gather over the past few days. So it has minimal impact on the animal. There is obviously some anxiety associated with throwing relatively expensive instrumentation to the bottom of the ocean. You can't necessarily control what happens once that camera is down sitting on the bottom. One, wait in. Let's let it go vertical. One, two, three. Got speed. Got speed. So I'm going to try that release command one more time. I'm just going to try, just leave it for a second and then... Still on the bottom. Still on the bottom. Another thing it could be is it could have prematurely released and we could be reading 1500 meters distance, you know, horizontally, potentially from it as well. So we'll also try the radio antenna and then we'll keep you posted. Okay, take your time, no problem. Cheers. Thank you. So, it could be on the surface now, guys. 3887, 3891, 4341. And it was at 1,500. I mean, it has to be, like that to me is it, it has to be at the surface. 4674, 5477. We can't even hear it, man. Mm -hmm. Either that thing's at the surface or it's... I don't think... I, I think there's a... Or the whole acoustic release system is dead. Yeah. We're getting no signal from it at all. OK, well, you might as well then come back and then let's make a decision on whether we want to dive or what you want to do. OK? Copy that. That sounds good. We'll come back right now. Yep. Yep. Nope. So, so it's still down there, you think? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. At this point, I, I have absolutely no idea. You can't hear it, mate. We're nowhere close to it. I mean, this thing's a goner, man. We're not finding this. Good. 
Iya. Iya. All right, I'm letting go of the block and to... Yeah, just lower it slowly, Taz. Yeah. After we lost the uh, camera that we did lose, we got some support from the Oceanex team, which really allowed us to track the camera, but also allowed us to gain our confidence back after losing the system. It's just, you know, it's a consideration that you have to take when you go out on these type of expeditions. Oh my word. <laughs> That is incredible. <laughs> okay, he's back on board. Yes, we go. Woo! Ready to see what we got? Uh, let's hope we go. I think what we have to remember about the Red Sea is because we know so little about the diversity, distribution, abundance of most species down there, all of the information that we're collecting is pretty vital and is novel. The golden chalice really is going down there and seeing a potential new species that is yet to be described by science. Uh, and that would be absolutely huge for us. Even if we don't see large apex predators, we're still increasing knowledge about the distribution of, of other species, which you know, are obviously quite vital components of, of the food web here. And so, you know, zeros are just as important as ones in, in this case. So it looks like we've got a, a dogfish coming in here. That looks like that carcahinid again. Yeah. Let's just watch. Wow! Does that thing come yeah, straight in? All of a sudden we see um, this carcarinid shark. So these are the requiem sharks that we see throughout the world. Um, and it looks like this individual here we think could be um, potentially a bronze whaler. And if that's true, that's incredibly exciting because um, not only is it the first time a bronze whaler shark has ever been reported in the Red Sea, it's the first time that one has ever been recorded down at 800 meters as well. So it's kind of a double whammy. Um, so we're just incredibly excited and we've got some really good footage of this animal as well. So we're going to talk to a couple of our, couple of our colleagues and come up with a, um, you know, a synopsis on what we think the species is and, and go from there. With some of the exciting data that we've been able to collect, we can then go to politicians and governments and be like, look, there's a wealth of information that can have implications for climate change. So that's why it's critically important for us to continue getting data and information that we can translate into sound policy decisions that can increase the conservation and management of our ocean ecosystems. It's really important moving forward that we you know, continue to explore the deep ocean, you know, because there is so much to be discovered down there. We can only thrive and grow as a human species through understanding our oceans better.